Hello and welcome to Dell's Gaming. I'm Dell and this is the latest update to From the Depths. Um, there's quite a few um, changes if you want to go through the release notes. I'm not going to go through them all one by one. Uh, please have a look at them. Primary among them is a lot of performance updates, which is great to see and great to hear. And we can test those um, when we get into the campaign, should make uh, frame rates better. Uh, there's also a slightly lower when the frame rates get very low, it starts cutting out some of the more heavy graphical and intensive CPU areas to hopefully reduce that lag. Makes the video, we should make the videos and the battles a lot better. Fingers crossed for that. Um, other areas are around building um, and control blocks, uh, which we're going to go and have a look at in a short while. Um, also, armaments, cannons get a little bit of a boost with their armor piercing values. And there's an interesting one with the missile arming times we might have a bit of a play with. Uh, useful for ships that might be sh shooting missiles close to themselves. They can now delay how long before the warhead becomes live. Very useful in uh, a number of situations um, uh, and uses. Um, there is a lot of other changes. We're just going to look at a few of them. The other one is in the single player. If we go into single player here and we go into the vehicle designer, uh, we've now got a few more options. We're doing a, we've got the vanil vanilla designer, which we'll be going into. But there is also the missile test facility, ideal for just testing missiles. There is also the benchmarker, which basically puts some of the most laggy parts of the game into the map, so you can test how laggy the ship will be in uh, combat. So, for the moment, we're just going to go into the vanilla designer. So, see you there in a second. Hello and welcome to the designer and I've just set up a little test area here just quickly just to have a look at some of these changes that have co gone through. So as a starting point um, let's have a look at this warhead change. Uh, we're not looking at all the changes, I went a little bit too far away there, um, but one of the changes we were talking about was the warhead. So now on the warhead we have this warhead arming delay. Uh, the default value is actually 2. Um, but we could set that to a zero for very close range rockets or up to um, 10 seconds delay for a, a, a rocket, a, a warhead before it is active, which I think is a great, uh, could be a great benefit in some of our um, designs. Uh, for myself at the moment, it's not necessarily a, a specifically a, a great one, but we can certainly do it. Now, um, we have also um a startup delay for the missiles up to 60 which so that's still there and this stays on this missile so it's a missile level um changing this value on the warhead you haven't actually got to be on the warhead changes it seems to change it for everything at the same time uh, we'll just change check that if i do explosive do i have different values no they're all the same value so we still have the 60 second delay on the um thruster would be nice if that was increased as well if one were about it but uh, <laughs> can't have everything right ballast tanks uh, we will have a quick check on those see if they've got changed they are still a height of 10 so we would still need to um, have a few of those to put in and regulators are still given 180 second delay on the timer so if we see we've got 180 de seconds delay um, on here it would be nice if the frosters would be able to delay up to say a hundred and uh, sixty seconds that'd be nice to be able to put a one in there 160 seconds so you can have that final little bit but anyway such is life um, other than that that's the main changes on the missiles um, what else have we got let's see let's just go uh, put some fuel in there because uh, we don't blow ourselves up in a second okay the electric engines so this is an electric engine and we now have a q toggle and if you look down on the bottom right hand side you'll see the power and as i add the q you can see how much power it is now adding to the vessel for each electric engine so we can define how much power up to 10 power units per electric engine 
and we can define how much power it gives. So that is going to define how long this charge lasts. So as we can either give a fast charge um, to something to get as much power out of that battery for brief usage and then it charges up maybe slowly again or we can make it more of a trickle just to keep things running over long times. Um, if we just fire off that missile you'll see that it should start in a second to go working on that oh, we might need to fire a couple of times yes there we go it's working and going to be working on that uh, ammo producer but the ammo producer is running fairly slowly um, but we're saving our charge so that took a lot longer to recharge up uh, for that particular one we need more batteries on this but it does allow you to define uh, how quickly you want to um, uh, use your charge in your batteries if we just set it down to a zero zero there we go there let this charge up one more time uh, so we have got an arrow ammo barrel here as well so if we now put this to a hundred percent so we've got 10 power units fire the missile off whoops come out of build mode Derek come on Del get here one There we go, we can see the uh, charger will use that charge a lot quicker on the producer. Uh, uh, the electric engines don't produce a lot of energy, but it's handy. The other big change which I, we were looking at was the um, control blocks. A uh, couple of ch good changes in this. Uh, we have a uh, input after so many seconds after spawn, that's good. So basically the inputs look roughly the same. Uh, the main difference is here. Altitude when greater than now goes from minus 500 to 1800 or 1800 uh, height. This will be great for subs in the minus 500 range and spacecraft in the 1800 range. So that is going to be excellent in that particular area. We can now define heights for space vehicles effectively. Um, so that's great. Um, what other changes so that's a, a pro, that's on both less than and greater than altitudes um, vehicle health is still the same vehicle speeds are I think are roughly the same um, ranges still up to 2000 right other bits so if we just go back to altitude here other changes over in the other area uh, main frames are still the same desired speeds uh, spin blocks where are, we? Where are we? Enemy simulators, not sure where, how that works at this moment. I think that could be in the simulation area, but we'll not use those at the moment. Other changes, aerial, uh, we'll go back to electric engines first. That output value can be of the electric engine can be set in the control block. So we can set what level we want that engine. And you might want to change it for various reasons. So under normal circumstances, have it off. Um, so the electric engine isn't even uh, working or at a very low level and then maybe if the enemy are within a certain range um, give the uh, full power of the electric electric engines there's quite a few I'm sure ideas people can come up with electric engines I haven't used electric engines myself yet so I'm not going to visit that just at the moment but a good addition aerial AI cards excellent little uh, changes here so now we can set change the minimum value or the cruise altitude, which is nominal, which is cruise, um, of the ship from minus 500 to 1800 as well. So we can set those ships to go up into space and uh, have a space, or even we might look at how we can use an aerial card to go underwater, which might be something we're going to have a look at. Um, and also the minimum altitude. The minimum altitude is at what height the um, vessel decides that it needs to uh, go up and or down. So um, that's uh, another useful little addition. So with all these changes and allowing for where we are in the map, let's have a go at building something. We're using these new control blocks to control the ship. So let's have a think what am i going to build now i did want to build a um a aerial vehicle um 
that's one of the, the things I wanted to build but I didn't want it to be just your standard plane because I don't build things which are just your standard anything really so how about a plane that varies its height depending on where um, it's the height of its enemy so uh, we will have various heights set by uh, um, control blocks and we will even go underwater so we this will be a uh, yeah a flying sub so if something is potentially on the surface um, of the it will go underwater and try and attack it from uh, uh, under the water if a um, a vessel is above the water maybe more say more than a certain height we'll then go high and attack it from above and we'll see how these how we can muck around with these values and see if we can get the AI there's two ways of making a, a vessel or two ways I know of of uh, or used to be of getting a vessel to do uh, under underwater and also above water and one of those was to have multiple um, mainframes and you would turn on a naval mainframe when you wanted to go uh, on the water or act as a sub and then you turn on the aerial AI uh, when you wanted to go in the air because they had set set values for height uh, etc so um, we're going to try now using those control blocks just to change a single aerial AI and see if we can make that work for us um, it, it could be interesting now uh, the structure of this plane uh, yes because it's going to be an underwater it's going to be closer to the rays that I'd produced previously long and slender I've got an idea for a missile system uh, hopefully I'm loud enough here uh, one two three and so oh, I've actually allowed maybe a little bit more than I need to but we'll we'll see how this goes I've allowed four um, we're going to try a slightly flatter design is they use f a lot of thrusters to stay in the air rather than wings um, partially on purpose because we want it to be able to actually go down into the water as well um, so we're not going to rely on uh, wings so much as just sheer grunt to keep it up in the air uh, we will put some wings on it but not too many we're going to have a fairly this will be a fairly close range ship we're going to have a lot of close range missiles that are far out of out of this I think um, you know me I'm gonna go for missiles if, if given any chance we might put a couple of longer ones longer range missiles out the front uh, potentially firing forwards and then I've got a hankering for some sideways firing missiles um, will they work have, no we haven't got the foggiest are they worth a go certainly and then we will need to leave a fair bit of space um, for wherever we put the AI for all the damn control blocks we're going to need um, we're going to use a fair bit of metal to make it sure it sinks on when it gets to the water and we'll sort out the water side first I think um, and then we'll get it to fly in the air so um, let's start with the missile systems because uh, that's going to be key as to how big this is going to be now I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm thinking very hard okay I'm thinking that we're going to have some missile systems on the front uh, but low down um, uh, for a forward firing type of um, uh, missile uh, maybe a, yes a, a four Four. Let's, let's, let's put five missiles there. So five missiles firing forward from the from the front, which will be um, possibly a mixture of guidance. Um, but they're going to go basically shoot out at anything in front, longer range. These are these are going to be aimed at a longer range target. I think that would be good and they're going to be separate from everything else we'll need some controllers um, we won't need we'll need a couple of things here but I should be able to sneak in a few uh, less oh no no I am going to need that controller there okay we're going to put them all on this base 
and we'll need an identify friend or foe if I'm using AI, uh, sorry, infrared. Oh, come on. There we go. Take that off, and we will need a stagger. Uh, we'll put about two seconds, 0.2 seconds stagger. Doesn't really matter too much at the moment. And we will obviously need to put a weapons controller on here as well. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Control. Um, sorry, AI, local weapons controller. Uh, we'll put that. Where should we put that? Where should we put it? We can put it on. We, I don't want to use too much space on here. Um, can't put it there. I think we will have to put it there for the moment. So that's fine. And uh, it will need a wireless receiver to communicate with the AI. Okay, so that's number weapon system number one. Uh, we'll sort out the missiles exactly later, but they're going to be sort of uh, not do too many warheads, but hit out the side. Now, the other weapon system, and I might reduce that down to three. I've got a, suddenly got a, a, a thought here. Now, I want a very close range missile systems, or a couple of them, um, farming out the bottom here, out to the side. And what I'm thinking of, and again, this may work, it may be a, a fail, but hey-ho, we'll, we only find out when we try this sort of thing. So, in fact, what we'll first do is metal block off this front section as being a um, bulkhead from the front. We're going to have all of our controls, I think, on the rear of this ship. Uh, engine, AI, etc. near the rear, I think, rather than the front. So, it'll be flown from the behind. A little bit strange, but hey ho, as I say, um, I never do anything normally. All right, we're gonna have quite a few missiles here down the center. Uh, how many is that? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then a break, and then I actually want another section of eight. Uh, yeah, let's put another eight here. Now we might build the engine on top of this. We'll see how much space it's going to use. Um, so we will put our mirror line on. So this is going to have a very big alpha strike. Is going to be the intention uh, once it gets in range. Whoops, that's going a little bit fine. Okay, let's try that again. Launch pads. So we're going to go out the sideways. On this launch pad. Now, I'm wondering how small a missile I can create. Now, I'm thinking of may whether I can get away with a three block missile. Now, normally you need four. That's usually most people have as their minimum size missile. And we can always, if it doesn't work, in uh, increase that a little bit. Uh, to a four block, we have enough space available to just add a little width in here. But if we put some of the control bits in here now, and I'm gonna do one little ch change here, because what we're gonna do is make this laser guided. Now we don't have to work on these lasers because we want to make sure that they can hit the target in any direction. So we might have to just work on the laser guidance at the back as well going up and down. But we'll do that in a minute. I just want to get a basic um, setup done here for the second. Um, if we now put the controls for this missile, actually we could, yeah, we could use one controller and two blocks here actually yes that could work out if they work correctly yep oops yep we saw controller so whoops come on one there and one there and then put our um, AI weapon controller in the center and actually if we take that one out put it there and then move these all over one
Now, uh, reason for doing it like this way, uh, redundancy from damage. Uh, I'm going to give a bit of defense uh, blocks, metal blocks here. Uh, so these two are two separate systems, but they will fire at the same time effectively, but they will um, be separate. So the staggers I put on here will not affect staggers on here, as an example. Uh, now, we haven't got a way about uh, for missiles, let's see, we just need a staggered fire, and in, in, in actual fact we wouldn't, might even get away without that, but let's see, let's put a staggered fire, and we'll put a staggered fire in there as well, so uh, 0.2 in each of them, why not? Now let's just check, so for a laser guided, yes this may work well, we, what we can do is have one section is all explosive and one section is all fragments and there's a f double fuel that, that will still take it a fair old distance with one fin i don't like that design let's put one fin there and a fuel tank there there we go and the thruster we won't worry about war delays at this time but we might play with that as well um startup delay we might just put a startup delay of a uh, second in e all of these just to give these and then these ones on the rear we're gonna make fins are we gonna make sorry fins dull we're gonna make fragmented with a nice tight 10 degree tone 10 degree angle and a short range uh, startup delay of two seconds short to all of them okay now you're saying well you haven't got a one turn in that if we use lasers we won't need the one turn that's the plan uh, whether that will work we will have to find out um, it is a as I say it is a bit of a, um, a plan on this it's a bit of a test um, it should be fun to, tr to see if this works properly um, if it doesn't I will have to change um, so each section has got its own little radar section so that's cool so that's our armory sort of sorted uh, we will block off some of this I might I can increase that I'm gonna, gonna not increase the uh, uh, number of missiles on the front for the moment we'll block out a little bit of this and a little bit of this a little bit of that we'll shape out the front a little bit I think later let's see we'll put something there maybe there yes yeah that looks, looks about right we're using metal blocks at the moment they are got the most uh, strength uh, for our ship to protect these areas we might put some wood or something in the center here um, uh, just depending on what we need for buoyancy we need metal blocks whoops blocks uh, metal blocks come on back come back come back come back come back need some metal blocks in here just to pick this area because we want it to ensure that um, uh, any if we get an explosion come in from one of these sections it doesn't take out the opposite section or it's got limited chance so if, if these get hit by a, oops let's put the laser designate I might have to change this actually because if they're both aiming forward they might interfere with each other but We'll work on that in a second. Right, so it's un the chance of something to be in exactly in line in front, yeah, that's unlikely. So um, it's either going to be a bit above or below. There we go. Um, and, and then the underneath, we'll, we'll get some um, more emitters underneath, etc. anyway. So that's fine. So the idea of this blocking, if I just complete my, what I was going to say, uh, is intended so that if uh, we get shot in here and it blows up this missile area this missile area can still fire and likewise if this frontal missile gets blown up it's not going to affect the rear ones so we got some redundancy in our weapons okay that's the level number one um, engines I'm going to need a fair bit of power here, I think, because we're going to need some shielding. We need to supply some fair jet engines, aimed to make this lift up, but also we're going to have to provide power to um, propellers for when it's in the water. 
So we're going to have a bit of both. We're going to have to see if the the um, the AI, uh, the naval, the aerial AI can manage to make this go around underwater. So we will be giving that a test. If it doesn't work, I'll be changing my mind, and we'll have to uh, change the whole design. But let's give this a test. Um, okay, we're going to give ourselves a little bit more room at the back, and we're going to make sure that this is fairly well armored we're going to have to use just normal blocks unfortunately so this is going to be our control area now so this will be ai uh one two three yeah that's enough room for an uh, an ai if we put the, the basic the core parts of the ai mainframe just here and whoops and a front and back or left and right and then uh, we'd have to take off the mirror line for a second, put an aerial AI and a target prioritization. So we can now have a look. So our cruising altitude's on here, 75, and we can go wee down, down, and then we can go back up again on here. So we can now have a bit of fun with uh, these and we can set our attack runs etc so we're going to see how this works with an aerial ai and then we're going to need quite a few control blocks i'm think i'm thinking um this is going to be quite control block heavy um so be prepared for a lot of um logic um okay that's going to be our <laughs> guess. There's, there's more than I need there. I realise that. And actual fact, I'm going to double... This is such a key area that I'm going to double uh, wall the sides of this because if this was to be taken out, um, it would be bad. So we'll see if we've got that. We've got a little bit more room available. Let's see how much room we need for the engine. So we're going to need about 1,000 power, which is... I've, um, now I've got a choice here actually hmm this this all being thought if I fill this in area I could go up at the moment we've got a very thin flat fin ship which is fine um, I can go higher there's nothing to say that I have to stay at um, this height there's nothing to say I can't go a little higher than this um, so what do you think what do you think? If we fill this in, protect this in here a little bit, protect this in here with some, uh, we'll put some beams in here. This is gonna be the front of the ship. So we don't want uh, that getting damaged by something. Uh, we might put some rams on the front, just for aesthetic appearance, obviously. And in case uh, it gets a little close, we'll put some ramming potential. I like having ramming potential. Um, and, th and they're quite good armor, actually, the, uh, the, the uh, rams as simple rams as we found with the piranha okay that's our, our basis i'm gonna have a think about how high i'm gonna make this if it's gonna be a long thinner ship like this or whether it's gonna go up now we're gonna need somewhere for our to make this fly now we'll put some um wings on the side and a tail plane but i think we're generally going to have some jet engines which basically um, are going to be pointing down and set to be main and um, we might use them for roll um, and roll reverse so we might do this with a lot of um, thrust um, so we how we'll see how we do on this. Um, and see if we can control it with just jets. And what I might do is put a second level of metal or wood on the bottom uh, for the jet control. So we'll have a look at that side. So join me back when I've got the basis of this vehicle sorted when we start mucking around with the control blocks and getting it to fly
and uh, basically go under the sea. We're going to start with the seaside. Seaside? Mm. We're going to start on the seaside, go to the beach. Now, we're going to start with the um, underwater and the naval control, but using an AI control, um, a aerial AI, and we'll see what we can do with that. But to do that, first of all, I'm going to need some engines. So join me back when we're ready to have a look at this. So see you shortly.
and welcome back. Uh, there was a big cut there because it's taken quite a while to get this uh, craft balanced for flying and the underwater. The underwater was actually quite easy, although it's not necessarily uh, for uh, agile under the water. It does go underwater, and but the flying took a while. So what have we got? This is in the mo at the current is in its, should we say, its normal um, flying mode, non-combat mode. And it'll quite flock, quite happily fly around the 40, 50 meters from the, from the sea mode, fairly low level. What we have is um, a lot of control blocks, <laughs> uh, significant numbers of control blocks. We have the um, AI control here, and we have uh, AIs controlling the speed, the water speed and the air speed. Now, basically, when it's out of the water, it sets the speed to zero. When it goes back in the water, it sets the speed to five for water. The same for the um, uh, airspeed. What that means is the jets and propeller turn off, on and off, depending on the height. That actually saves power uh, uh, on, from the engine. So that's a 100 power that's available to the engine because that's not put turning and the same when you're in the sea. Uh, we could that make that more complex, but that's, that's just the level I had it set at. We then have the more complex AIs. So we have um, the AIs over to couple, first of all, a couple of uh, control blocks uh, here, which are setting the standard. So every 10 seconds, they set it to a 40 meter cruising altitude and a, whoops, that's not the right one, let's get the right one. No, that's the radar. It's getting a little cramped in here, so it is a little difficult to get to the right place. And a 30 min meter minimum height. So they're setting this particular mode as such. It doesn't hold its height very exactly, but it, it keeps it out of the water. Then we have the little complex controller. Now this little complex controller over here is a... Um, let's see if I can do a P. Oops, let's get into build mode. Okay, so we have a, um, a precision turret here, uh, facing downwards with a missile controller and a uh, block on the bottom of it. This is similar to what I did previously on, a, on the Atlantis, um, earlier version of the Atlantis, to, to control this. And these are all controlled by, and this turret is controlled by this missile controller. So the missile controller is set to only aim at things which are 20 meters, and tw more than 20 meters at the moment uh, above the ground. Uh, we could set that higher, but we've, I've set it for 20 for the moment. So any air targets will mean that this turret will move up. It will turn towards the front of the plane to try and aim at the target. Uh, that will trigger three control blocks. First of all, this control block sets the hydrofoils up, so if it's in the water, under the water, it will start to raise. Um, it will set this control block uh, here to set the, oops, that's the wrong one. Let's find the right one. There we go. Set this one to a 200 meter for the um, AI. So basically this will make it pop out the water and crash into a, a mountain. Uh, that's always handy, it looks like, um, it's not exactly guiding itself around the mountain. Oh well, lucky I just hold, halted it there. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's just say possibly aerial guidance is still not its, its strong point, but anyway. Um, so that will make it go around a mountain, um, hopefully. Um, or, uh, sorry, let's start again. That will make it pop out the, the air and go high. There is some more control blocks. These control blocks at the front control for the underwater and keep it down at a fairly low 100 meters below the sea. And uh, so let's um, see if it's what it's going to do with this uh, mountain. I think it's going to try and crash into it. Yes, um, I think that's most probably not going to be helpful for it. Let's see if it will uh, try and avoid it. Obviously, there is some AI trying to avoid the mountain which is obviously some of the new AI stuff. It's trying to obviously get a little bit of height, I guess, but that's, a, that's one heck of a big mountain it's trying to go. Let's see if we can hop it over. Oh, it is doing it. It is. The AI did 
manage it. Maybe I should have left it. Had confidence. Uh, let's just head it back to here. See if we can get it to turn that way. Oh, it's going to try and turn over the mountain to get there. That's an interesting concept. So uh, we'll get it back into the into the area. So let me just get it back into the uh, proper area. Welcome back. And we're now in near to the testing area again, our starting point. So we can run the test. Now I'm starting this uh, about 1,000 meters from where they should spawn um, on the sea. See, this would be roughly where a starting position for a battle would be. So, if we start off with a one of the typical ships, let's say uh, a Marauder, just as a target, um, that's, that's powerful enough to, on here, and then spawn it in and see what it does against a ship born target. So, first of all, it's going to make its way out of the water. It does do a hard climb at the beginning for its water exit. Uh, and then head over to the target, which is cool. Uh, it's keeping that at range. It is now diving down, and once it gets to about 600, it should make a, a decision, and it either go into the sea or continue up. So this is now going into the sea. All the missiles are still have, have been launched and are heading to the target, hopefully, in their various... I quite like it's like a spread pattern coming in. And the ship has gone underwater and will continue to dive down to about 100 meters, continuing to fire the missiles. Now, the missiles obviously um, will try to come around when they hit a wave, they'll come out of the water and continue to try and hit the, the vessel. Um, I might have to work on this and maybe build some different, ves uh, different missiles that only work for seaborne targets we'll have we'll have a think on that i think for this vessel this is good enough at this stage um known issues are the missiles aren't great at very close ranges but uh, they still do the job they're having a chew away this would vessel wouldn't be on its own it would be part of a, a larger fleet so uh, the number of missiles would be increased but it's staying under there, which is the main bit we wanted to test, that this will stay under the water and continue to attack. So we won't continue this, this battle. Let's just reset the position. And then we'll see against an air uh, target. So if we get back into the position here, so this is the new starting position again. So this time we will give it an airship, something like a... Um, uh, that's just re retrofit just to give that up that's a high flying target so one more time we will launch the vessel so we've got the exit out of the water and initial climb once again it should head over to the target uh, which it is uh, it's starting to fire. Now this time it should stay out of the water. If we get enough climb, it should say, oh, this is an aerial target. And there we go. It is climbing again. So um, it should now climb and stay at a higher. It's climbing a lot higher, as you can see, because we've I've set the altitude at the moment to 350 just to ensure it goes very high. And it's continuing to fire the missiles. Now, obviously, we could have a work on the, the missile systems, but this is just to show the basic concepts. Um, if anyone wants to um, have access to this ship so they can make it better than I have and uh, just take the basic uh, concepts of all the uh, controllers and have a look at it and build it to their own ship let me know um, but and I'll put it up onto the Steam Workshop so they can access it but until then hopefully this has been useful and a little bit of a, of a review of the control blocks and just showing what you can do um, with these ships so is it a plane or is it a sub can't make my mind up it's um it's a bit of a both isn't it really so it's a um is it a a, a plub or a sane and i'm definitely not sane but anyway hope you enjoyed this please click the like and um uh, comment down below and um until next time have fun